Welcome to Dental Business Rx. Practice success in 30 minutes or less. Thank you for calling ABC Dental. In today's economic conditions, managing your overhead, your expenses, your outgo is of paramount importance. The combination of close to 20% overall inflation and the accompanying parabolic labor cost increases since the spring of 2020 added to, in the case of dentistry, lowered reimbursements from insurance companies has made it a battle for the average owner dentist, especially if you're heavily in network, to maintain a modest level of profitability. So if we're looking at the average dental practice and we want to increase profitability, where do we start? Where do we cut? Is it it payroll, labs, supplies, advertising? The usual thing to do uh, that we've seen people do at least is to look for the lowest hanging fruit. In other words, which expense category could be cut that would have the least impact on practice operations and the most impact on profitability? And you'd hope that this category was beefy, meaning there was a ton of room to create extra funds. You're you're not going to create a huge amount of extra funds if you're cutting a $200 monthly expense, unless there's a lot of $200 monthly expense that are, uh, for lack of a better word, cuttable. So what people are normally looking for when they're doing this is larger expenses, expenses that have a real impact by reducing them and have a lot of room to reduce them, which begs the question, What is your largest monthly expense? At first glance, you might say payrolls or supplies or hopefully not rent. Well, I'll give you a hint. For 99.9% of those that are listening to this podcast, it's none of these. And chances are it's something that might not have ever even occurred to you. And that's what I want to talk about in this week's episode. I want to discuss what is, for most of you, your largest, most expensive monthly expense, and more importantly, how to recover it. My name is Jeff Bloomberg, and I'm your host. And I think we start by – we're just going to jump right into this this week. So what is, for most of you, your biggest monthly expense? It's something we call your monthly loss. So what is this monthly loss? How do we calculate it and how do we eliminate it? Well, let's start by defining it. Now, if you're familiar with MGE, you know that the basis of our curriculum is the Hubbard Management System developed by American philosopher L. Ron Hubbard. Now, Mr. Hubbard spent over 30 years developing this system, and his works on management consist of literally millions of words and cover just about any aspect of running an organization you might think of, from planning to executive skills to financial management, HR, team building, etc. If you want to know more about the Hubbard Management System, I'll put a link to it on the episode webpage from the MGE website. So like most of our curriculum, this definition I'm going to be covering with you of monthly loss comes from Mr. Hubbard's work. So what is this monthly loss? I'll read you this. So here's what Mr. Hubbard says. There is some degree of loss in a failure to prevent unreal and unprofitable expenditure, but the greater loss to finance is income lost or never made. I'll read that again. But the greater loss to finance is income lost or never made. Now, he's using finance in this sentence. It's got a capital F. And he's referring to what he called the finance office in an organization. And even if you look at a large corporation, you'll have a controller or a CFO, you know, someone who's in charge of finance, the executive in charge of finance. They, that's an executive position in the finance office. And then you might have a, a an area of the organization that does payables and receivables and things like this. Uh, that's a separate area of the organization. We get into this when we get into all our organizational training. But when he's referring to finance with a capital F, he's referring to the office, the finance office, where your CFO would work out of, your senior financial executive. So I'll read that sentence one last time with thinking with that definition in mind. But the greater loss to finance is income lost or never made. And he goes on. The difference between what an organization should be making and what it does gives finance greater loss than any financial planning saving could ever recover. And he ends it with this. Foolish or unreal expense is prevented because it's a poor investment. But an organization of 50,000 income potential making only 20,000 is a weekly loss of 30,000 to finance. He's referring to this on a weekly basis. So we have an organization with a 50,000 per week income potential making only 20,000 
is, in this case, as he says here, is a weekly loss of $30,000 to finance, meaning, again, that finance office. So let's roll this back around to a dental office. So we have an office that should be, not potentially someday, maybe, if everything was great, but it should be with its current facilities and its current staff and its current setup, should be collecting $150,000 a month. But it's only collecting an average of $80,000 a month. That is a $70,000 a month loss. And the problem is, is we look at this when we, when we hear something like this. I remember the first time I read this, and believe me, I've, I've seen this pan out so many times. And maybe this is the thought you had as you hear this. You go, well, you know, that's potential, you know, and if I reach my potential, it'll be great. It's the wrong way of looking at it. You actually have to look at it. If, if this was you, you should be doing 150 and you're only doing 80. Flip the way you're thinking about it a bit. It's almost as if you're writing a $70,000 check every month. Think with it like that, as opposed to, gee, wouldn't it be great if I did 150? No, you're writing a check for $70,000 a month, which I guarantee you would be your largest expense. It would be bigger than your payroll, bigger than what you're taking out of the practice. It's definitely more expensive than your lab fee. That is your largest monthly expense. Now, how have I seen this pan out? Obviously, I've seen it pan out with a ton of clients, but a really good example I've seen is when clients come to the MGE communication and sales seminars. This is where our clients learn uh, not just how to organize the practice to increase case acceptance, but also how to communicate with patients in such a way to get them to want what they actually need. And I feel comfortable saying that no one does this better than us in the industry. We've been doing it for a long, long, long time, okay? But what we see, that was my minor shameless plug, what we see is we'll have someone come to their first seminar, And at the beginning of the next seminar, we always start off with wins, any successes anybody's had. So you'll call on, and this happens at every one of these seminars, and you'll find a client that was here last month, and they went back home and did an extra 25 last month, and another one that did an extra 40. Maybe one did an extra 10. One did an extra 30. Now, what's funny about this is none of these clients hired a bunch of staff in that month. They were maybe doing some marketing, some new marketing, but it didn't even have time to impact the practice. So it wasn't like a ton of new patients got dumped on the practice. All that changed was they were talking to patients now and patients were accepting what they actually needed as whereas before they weren't. So what that tells you is two things. One, that was great. They're, they're producing more, which is awesome. And mo- more importantly, patients are actually getting the treatment they need if we really look at this. But that potential income was always there. They were actually losing that money every single month. And then all of a sudden they stopped the hemorrhaging and stopped actually losing that money and start moving more towards their potential. And, you know, I've pointed the, I usually don't point this out to a client at one of these seminars because that's for newer clients. But when it comes to our finance seminar, where we teach our clients about financial planning, I'll bring this up and I'll call on the clients in the room. You know, we'll go over what a monthly loss is. And then I'll call on the clients in the room and say, you know, okay, when, when you came to your first MG communication and sales seminar, what was your first increase? Well, I did an extra 30,000 a month right after the first seminar and so on. We go around the room and then I'll show them like, okay, cool. Well, what I want you to do is take that now and multiply it by 12. So you were, you were, you made an extra 30,000 a month after learning how to communicate more effectively to your patients. So what is that for a year? That's $360,000. That's what you were losing every year. That's the monthly loss. And then again, the follow-up questions, and I'm not doing this just to depress our clients. I I jokingly say we have some Jack Daniels in the back afterwards once they figure it out, but uh, uh, we don't really, but we'll go through this. Okay. So you were losing 360 a year, but were you paying your bills up to that point? Yes, they were. Were they paying their staff, their labs? Of course they were paying all those things. Were they behind on any bills? No. So whose money was that? That was theirs. That was their potential profit and income that they just weren't making. That was always there. It was there. It was in their patient base. You know, very often you've probably looked at your incomplete treatment list. There's probably in just about every dental practice you'll see of average volume, there's at least a million dollars, if not more, of potential treatment to do. And people go, oh, that's a gold mine. Well, I don't look at it that way. It's it's really better for your patients if they do it all. But that was that was that should have been being done all along. So you're actually, instead of, again, looking at it as missed opportunity or lack of reaching your potential, look at it as an actual loss, 
Okay, that's the way we want to look at this. So now let's say you're, you're sitting here listening to this and you go, well, how much am I losing per month? Well, I'm going to give you a little exercise you can do. It's a very thumbnail exercise. It's not very complex, but this, you can do this for your practice and sort of figure out where you're at. I'll give you an example. It's, it's a couple simple steps. So step one, I want you to work out what the monthly income potential for your practice is. Now, if you have trouble with this, if this isn't immediately readily available to you, again, without adding anything, not by adding a chair or adding five staff, but I'm talking about right now, what your monthly income potential, of course, if you just lost a staff member, bring bring that person in and replace them, keep that as part of your calculation. But with your current facilities, your current setup, your current team, What is your income potential? If you have trouble figuring this out, I'll give you three basic steps. First thing you do is you figure out what would be a good production day in your practice. Good, not great, not a day where you place 12 implants and that you've never done that before and you've never done it since. We're not worried about those days. Worried about what's a good day. Maybe that's a $6,000 day. Maybe that's an $8,000 day, a good, you know, day in your office. Not amazing, but good. Then I want you to take a look at, uh, the average number of days you work per month. Simple, right? So let's say you go, I do about, a good day would be $8,000 and my average number of days per month was 17. Okay, well that would be, if you were to multiply 8,000 by 17, you'd come up with a potential of $136,000 a month, okay? And obviously this math is gonna be however you do it. So good day times average number of days you work per month. Now what I want you to do is determine what your actual production. If you're doing this with production, that's fine, or you can do it with collections. You know, I'm assuming when you produce something, it's all collectible and you don't have a collections problem when I'm saying this, okay? If you're collecting like good 97% or above, you can use either number. If you have a huge difference between the two, that's a whole other situation. But let's say we're doing this off production, assuming you're going to collect it. So you take a look at what's a good day, you multiply it by number of days, that's your your potential production. Now I want you to take a look at what your actual production has been. And I would average this out over the past three months, all right? And make sure it's not a month where you were taking a vacation or you weren't there, but the last three months you were there for the whole month. So let's say you do that and you did uh, 110 one month and you did 95 the other month and 107 another month. So you average this out it's, and it's $104,000. So potentially with your current facility, you should be doing 136 and then you do your average and you're averaging 104. Okay, that's your actual. Then it's real simple. You just subtract what you're currently doing from what you're potentially or what you should be doing. Okay, I use the word should as Mr. Hubbard did. And what do we come up with? We have a $32,000 difference. Should be doing 136 and you currently doing 104 on average. That's a $32,000 difference. That is your monthly loss. You're losing $32,000 a month or in a year, $384,000. And again, you're probably paying your bills. You're not behind on anything. You might even be making a decent salary. Most of that $384,000 should belong to you, which you could put some of it back in the office or you can take more home. It doesn't matter. That's, but it, ultimately that is money that you should be making. So now obviously this will vary individual to individual, you know, from how much they're losing to why they're losing it. And, you know, more importantly, how to recover this. Uh, what we do offer up here at MGE, if you want to take advantage of it, we have something called the production calculator, which I'll put a link to it on the episode webpage. Uh, you click it, you fill out some basic numbers, and you get a consult with one of our practice management specialists, and they can sort of point you in the right direction and show you, look, this is why you're not reaching your potential. I would definitely advise that if you want to get a little bit more individual attention on this. But let's take a look at some of the general reasons. There's there's three basic basic reasons why you would be having, you know, a large monthly loss or an unacceptable level of loss in the practice. Okay. So let's take a look at these. How do we recover it? In other words, well, the first problem you probably have the idea of, because I was talking about a little bit earlier is, is sales. Okay. It's sales. Now sales breaks down into two categories. One is sales skill, individual sales skill. And then the other is the organizational side of sales. So we're looking at, you know, you as the doctor, how good are you at communicating to your patients and getting them to understand what they need, 
why they need it and getting them to want it. All right. That's a communication skill. There's also specific sales techniques. They're not, you know, weird used car salesman type techniques. It's nothing like that, but it's being able to communicate in such a way where it's actually understood by your patients and creates an impact and makes them want to do it. So you have to up your sales skill if you want to increase, increase your closing percentage and thereby your case acceptance, which again, that's really a win-win both for you and your patient. They're healthier. Your practice does better. You get to do more of the treatment that you want to do. It's, it's a great situation. Then there's the organizational side of sales. I've talked about this off and on in many prior episodes, but uh, you know, if you were to take, let's say, I don't know, you're getting 40 new patients a month and you've got a pretty booked hygiene and uh, you're doing pretty well. If I dumped an additional 40 new patients a month into your practice, you might not even be able to properly handle those. You might actually see your production go down because now you're spending less time with each new patient because you're trying to keep up with everything. And that time you used to spend before gave you a certain closing percentage and now you just don't have time for it. Or you're delegating a lot of the case presentation to other people now because you just don't have time to keep up. So that's the organizational side of sales. You'll end up with lost opportunities, wasted opportunities, and you're not organized to sell properly. So there's sales skill, there's sales organization. We go into that all at the MG Communication and Sales Seminars. I already have the link on the on the site. And there's a few other episodes where I've talked about the organizational side of sales, as well as closing, as well as handling, handling objections, if you want to listen to those as well. I would definitely check those out because, again, that, that's probably if I had to pick the most effective means to immediately take control and stop losing this monthly income, that would be number one. That's usually where we start with a new client. Usually we start with the new client as new patients. We'll do our MG new patient workshop, and then it's right into sales training to capitalize on this lost opportunity. Okay. Second area, if you want to recover this monthly loss, has to do with your fees and PPO participation. Now, you may have done this calculation on your monthly loss with your current fee structure. You know, maybe you're getting an average of $824 a crown and your full fee is $1,350, right? Uh, just eliminating those, like getting your fees up to at least the, I don't know, the 60th percentile in your area by your zip, which most people aren't at. I can tell you just from looking at fees, um, and eliminating the amount of participation or, or, uh, how many plans you're involved with so that your fees start to normalize will recover a huge, cause you're literally doing the same thing for three to 400 more dollars an hour. Okay. And again, you know, look, I, I don't want to get started on PPOs this episode or we'll go another 45 minutes, but you don't have to participate with these things. They are not difficult to get out of. There's a way to do it. It's very individualized because it has to do with the amount of participation uh, going on in your practice. What I'd recommend if you're kind of sick of it already and you want to just be done, uh, you can do what we call our fees and plans consultation. I'll put a link to it on the episode webpage because I, you know, I, I've gotten into this before in other episodes, do this, do that, but it really, this is super individualized. If you've got 20% of your practice is PPO, you're going to have completely different marching orders than the guy or girl who's got 80% of their practice PPO with most of it being Delta different situation. They're both handleable, but we're taking a different path, or at least uh, we're taking maybe a slower path on the 80% practice, okay? But especially with inflation, uh, costs going up, and the fact that PPOs have been reducing reimbursement, th this is something that you want to think about or you should have been thinking about, and you need to take action now because in some cases, it may take you years to get out. So there you go. All right. The third reason why you might be losing potential income is your office is just disorganized and not orientated or oriented rather would be the right word for production. It's just very, uh, you know, you have basic functions being done, but nobody's really assigned to specific things in the practice. Everybody does a little bit of everything. Nobody's really responsible for anything. And you end up with a little bit of, while, while it may not appear so from the outside, it's a bit disorganized in your mind. You might also have, and this is where it can get worse, is, it, well, first off, that will lower team morale. Your team won't operate as effectively as it could because nobody really has an area that they're responsible for. But then you could also have the added little problem of where you might have a non-productive one or or more non-productive team members who, regardless of how organized you were, wouldn't really be a good fit for your practice. Now, when you're disorganized and not set up properly, it camouflages the fact that you have non-productive team members. If I'm not measuring productivity anywhere in a business, how do I know who's productive and who isn't? And think about it for a second. If I'm a boss and I walk in 
And, uh, you know, how am I grading employees? Maybe the ones that are nicest and smile the most and have the cleanest desks. If I have no idea what anybody's actually producing, what they're giving back to the organization, how, how they're performing, then I have no way of knowing who's productive and who's not. So that's, that's sort of important, especially as your practice starts to grow, being properly organized, keeping statistics learning to manage, using statistics. These are things that we teach all of our clients. But if you want to grow, this becomes a requirement. Otherwise, you really are sort of – it's sort of like driving a car with all of your instrumentation in your trunk. You know, How much gas do you have? I don't know. It's in the trunk, right? Well, the, the gas isn't, but the, the uh, gauge is, right? So those are the three main areas that you would jump all over if you wanted to recover this monthly loss. So, and that, that's pretty much all I have for you this week on this. I just wanted you to start thinking about this because this is something, especially now, uh, where profitability beca- has become tougher and tougher to maximize with the, the way things are, you know, with costs going up and whatnot. This is where you really need to get on top of your game. And keep in mind, it may take you a little bit, especially if you have a lot of PPOs and, uh, you know, you don't have the team in place that you want and, and things of this nature to get where you want to be. So it's something that you want to start off on as soon as possible. You don't want to wait. You don't want to wait till things get worse and you know your your allowable fee for a crown is down by another 10% because you know things are bad all right anyway i do hope this helps folks and we're here to help you if you need any help uh, if you have any questions about mge you can always call us at 800-640-1140 or find us online at mgeonline.com if you want to take advantage of any of those consults i mentioned you can just go ahead and click the link on the episode webpage you can also find out more about the mge communication and sales seminars and uh, if you enjoyed this podcast if you don't mind taking a minute to like it or at least follow it on the podcast platform that you're using whether it's apple podcast spotify or google would be greatly appreciated And that's all I have. I hope you guys have a great week and we will see you at the next episode.